Hey people, this is my review of Green Lantern and the third video of the Superhero Movie Battle of 2011. Just for those of you who don't know, I am looking at Thor, X-Men First Class, Green Lantern, and Captain America, and giving my impressions on each of them after I've seen them. After I've seen all of them, I'm going to compare them and give my opinion on which movie was the best of the year. So, before I get into my thoughts on Green Lantern, I think you should know two things about me. First, I'm not really that critical of movies in general. Yes, it takes kind of a lot to impress me, but at the same time, a movie has to be pretty bad for me to really dislike it. Also, when I want to like a movie, in the past I've tended to kind of fool myself into thinking a movie is better than it is. I did it for Terminator Salvation, I did it for Superman Returns, I did it for The Last Airbender, and in hindsight, I didn't really come down on those movies af right afterward as much as I should have. But that aside, I think that one thing that really can sour me on a movie, in, in my opinion of it, right afterward and in the long run, is when I see a lot of potential there and the movie really doesn't live up to it. And sadly, that's the case for Green Lantern. There was so much potential for a great Green Lantern movie, and this movie just, just does not deliver on that. And I, there, there is just so much to talk about with this, and this, or this review is mainly going to be me ranting about a lot of stuff, but there will be spoilers, so for those of you who don't want to be spoiled on Green Lantern, I guess you should go to see it before watching this review, but honestly, Green, the plot of Green Lantern isn't that interesting, and it's pretty predictable, so none of what I talk about is going to be really ruin the movie experience for you. And to be honest, I don't really recommend going to see this movie. If you're like a really big Green Lantern fan or something, then I think you should see it to because you need to form your own opinion on it. But if you're not, and you're not really dying to see it, then ju just just pass it up. Really, like. I don't think it's that enjoyable a movie, it's not that good of a story, and I think if you don't know Green Lantern, this would be a poor way to be introduced to the character. And that's kind of my worry with this movie, that since they made kind of a mediocre movie, people are going to see Green Lantern and think, oh, Green Lantern, that, that was, that's not that good, the, the character must not be that good, the, it's probably just one of those characters that doesn't tr translate well into live action so and it's neither of those things a there's a great story for Green Lantern and B it is a story that had the potential to be translated very well into a live action movie like DC over the past like 33 years since Superman the movie came out has only made big budget movies for Superman Batman and I guess Jonah Hex if you count that of characters from the DC Universe. And in the past, like before they even announced that they were making Green Lantern, what I was thinking of which major DC character would be the best to be the first non-Superman Batman character to get a major movie, my I always thought it would be Green Lantern because the Green Lantern's origin story is very strong. I've watched it over and over and over again in very different in different interpretations of the character and it's a pretty classic story. I think it's one of the most classic origin stories of a superhero. And aside from the origin story being a good starting point for the character, there's just a lot to go off of because you've got the entire Green Lantern core with this rich history and in recent years there have been some great stories written. Like To give some of my experience with Green Lantern, I have read one volume with Kyle Rayner as Green Lantern, I don't really remember the story of what went on there, but I have read Green Lantern Secret Origin, Green Lantern Rebirth, The Sinestro Core War, and Blackest Night. And any of you who have read some of these later stories know that there's a lot that they could do with the series going into the sequels. And in terms of 
uh, Secret Origin. That was a great basis for what they could do with the movie. And another great basis for the live action movie was the animated movie, Green Lantern First Flight. It was a very good, like, first, first attempt at making a movie of the Green Lantern origin. And honestly, I think it is better in just about every way to the live action Green Lantern movie. And if you combine the aspects of Green Lantern Secret Origin with Green Lantern First Flight and just put a few tweaks here and there, you got a very solid basis for a live action movie. When I saw First Flight a few years ago, my confidence in the potential for a Green Lantern live action movie went through the roof because I said, I thought to myself, this is a really solid movie here. If they could just build off of this, they got a very good start for a live action movie. There were several problems with the live action movie and how it chose to diverge from the these two very good tellings of the origin and the and their plots and the differences in the creative direction that the movie went in, every everything about it I felt was inferior to the way that Secret Origin and First Flight did it. But before I get into detail with that, I think I should cover some of the more basic things, like casting. Ryan Reynolds is Hal Jordan. I had didn't really feel that casting choice from pretty much early on when they announced that it was going to be Ryan Reynolds. I have no problem with Ryan Reynolds. Like, a few years ago there was talk that he was going to be the Flash, and I thought he was perfect for that role, and I was very excited to see him take on the role of Wally West. Because from what my experience with the character, a little bit in comics, and mostly through Justice League and Justice League Unlimited Animated Series, Ryan seemed like perfect dead on to portray that character. And also he was chosen to play Deadpool in X-Men Origins Wolverine and when he was actually acting like when the character was actually written to be like Deadpool in that movie he did a great job with that and there was talk of, this, of a spin-off and there's still kind of talk there I think he's great for that character so there are certain characters I think that he's like cut, definitely cut out to play but I, it's not that he was terrible for Hal Jordan, but I didn't really feel like he was that perfect guy for the role. And it wasn't completely his fault, the problems with Hal Jordan in the movie. I think the character wasn't very well written and his story arc wasn't very good. So Hal just, Hal just wasn't that likable to me in the movie, honestly. like He was kind of a screw up, kind of lacking confidence, always running away from everything, and then he had to learn like this basic predictable lesson. And just in general, it just didn't get... I wasn't pulled into this character, I didn't really feel a connection to him, or anything. Um, the other character I want to talk about the portrayal is Sinestro, played by Mark Strong. I thought Mark Strong was a pretty solid choice for Sinestro, like, his scenes were pretty good and he embodied the character pretty well. He didn't really have that Sinestro arrogance, I thought, completely, but overall he was a solid choice for Sinestro. The problem with Sinestro in this movie is that he wasn't written well either. Like, the, Sinestro did very little in this movie. He was kind of a dick to Hal Jordan early on when he shows up, and then he was making his inspiring speeches to the Green Lantern Corps, which basically just served to show that Sinestro was like the top Green Lantern and everybody respects him. And they had some other stuff with, okay, mod spoilers here, run away people if you don't want spoilers, with him w wanting to forge a yellow ring to take advantage of the fear to fight Parallax because fear, Parallax is a fear entity so he wanted to fight fear with fear. So a lot of foreshadowing of what he's going to do. But in terms of this movie, the character was very uninteresting and really not well developed at all. So, yes, getting back to some of the broader things within the movie, I, I feel like the decision to spend so much time on Earth in this movie was really one of the things that hurt it. Like, I think you can draw comparisons to Thor. Like, 
both Green Lantern have, and Thor have both have an otherworldly element. Like Thor has Asgard, and Green Lantern has Oa, and both have Earth. But with Thor, I felt like it was pretty well balanced, and both served a good purpose. In Green Lantern, I felt like neither one of them were very well done or very interesting in the telling of the story. But judging by what I've seen and read of Green Lantern, I, the appeal of the character comes from like all the stuff that he's doing in space and everything, the interaction with the rest of the Green Lantern Corps, exploring, seeing new locations and everything, and keeping it so much on Earth turned it into a pretty typical standard hero gets is flawed, gets power, has to deal with this power and save people from this threat. And it was, wasn't was a very good version of that typical superhero story. And I feel like it didn't play to its strengths at all. Like, Green Lantern is really radically different from all these characters because he's not just on his own doing stuff, he's part of this very huge organization of like s tons of Green Lanterns and just play just playing off of that would have been so interesting and how how the universe is organized into all the different sectors and just how the Guardians handle things and the organization of the Green Lantern Corps just get into that like I've heard I heard them several times try to draw comparisons to Star Wars, how they want it to be kind of like the superhero Star Wars or DC Star Wars, but it didn't have star, that Star Wars feel to it. It's like, all, almost every Star Wars feeling movie has like traveling from planet to planet and everything. Like, and I've drawn comparisons personally from the Green Lantern Corps to the Jedi Order. And with the Jedi Order, I think he, in the Star Wars movies, I really mention Star Wars a lot in these videos. I'm just kind of noticing that. But in the Star Wars movies, you get you really get a feel for for the Jedi Order and what it's like to be a Jedi and what that means. In the Green Lantern Corps, Hal goes and he trains for a little while. He's he meets Tomar Ray, who really is only important for that first scene where he's giving exposition about who the Green Lanterns are. He trains with Kilowog for just a brief scene, and then he has this little fight with Sinestro, and that's pretty much all the interaction with the Green Lantern Corps he has. Like, he's not working with these people and learning from them, really, and these characters are very flat and they, they aren't very well developed at all. So, I feel like in, in First Flight, for example, and, oh, actually in First Flight and in Secret Origin, there is a strong emphasis on the relationship between Hal Jordan and Sinestro, which makes sense because Sinestro becomes a very important character later on when he is eventually a villain. If you didn't know that Sinestro is a villain, then sorry. <laughs> it's kind of common knowledge and the guy's name is Sinestro. It sounds like Sinister, so hint, hint. But anyway, yeah. So, in both of them, Sinestro kind of takes Hal under his wing and is his mentor. Another Star Wars comparison, like the Jedi and the Padawan, but it's, it's an important relationship, and I think that if they made it more Star Wars-y, in, in that sense, it would have worked better for them. Also, the Sinestro-Hal relationship could have been sort of like the first Men in Black movie, and not in tone, but in terms of the experienced member taking on this young, younger, inexperienced guy and kind of going on this mission together as the younger person learns from the older guy. But the in First Flight, First Flight definitely sets Sinestro. First Flight puts Sinestro as the main villain of the movie. I, I think they were smart not to do that in this movie. Like, I do agree with the decision to not make Sinestro the, the villain right away and just 
save that for later, but they should have still developed him and kind of shown his villainous tendencies. Like, Sinestro as a character, to me, is the guy that kind of has a good good mission. He wants, like, he wants peace, but he wants peace to the extent that he's, like, obsessed with order and he, he becomes a dictator, actually, and he kind of rules over his own own planet and he's brutal, he, he's kind of not afraid of using force and being kind of crossing lines that most of the Green Lanterns that the Guardians knew would not approve of. So I would have shown this darker side to Sinestro even while he was still kind of a good character and a one of the protagonists of the movie, I would have really kind of shown that and set up for him to take center stage in the next movie. In this movie, Sinestro is kind of important and they do foreshadow a lot, and especially there's a scene during the credits where, where Sinestro gets the yellow ring and gets his yellow costume and everything, like very strongly hinting that he's going to be the main villain of the second movie, if they ever get to make a second movie. But that the whole Sinestro how relationship was absent from this movie, making him even if they do make him a, into a pretty decent villain in the second movie, they kind of weaken that plot by not introducing him and telling his story very well in the first movie. 